Hi there. This video is sponsored by The Ridge. Go to ridge.com slash browntable and use the code browntable to get 10% off your purchase with free worldwide shipping. Have you seen Logan? You know the movie in which the guy with the knives for knuckles decides, I've had it with just scratching people, man, and he just starts. <laughs> that movie should have been the last X-Men movie. I don't know whose bright idea, what company's bright idea it was to not have the X-Men universe just end with Logan. Logan is a movie about showcasing the life of a superhero in a world in which superheroes lost. It is a superhero story, but not one that we've seen explored all too often. It's a movie that balances the complexities of a broken down superhuman having to live as a normal person. Logan in this film is a shadow of his former self, a man who decided that, yes, I'd rather take a bullet than let my car get damaged. He drives a limousine, by the way. Yes, Wolverine drives a limousine in this movie. The X-Men are dead. It's at this point, right at the very beginning, that the movie slams you in the face. The people we've been following all this time, these heroes, these icons, are gone. And one of their own is to blame, Charles Xavier, easily the most paternal character, the one that should have been saving them. Humanity is what the X-Men technically lost against, not an evil supervillain or a mutant god. Charles Xavier started to manifest Alzheimer's and lost control of his powerful telepathic abilities. Wolverine is dying due to metal poisoning from the adamantium in his system. The things that should make these characters larger than life is what is causing them pain. And with Xavier not even remembering what he did because of what he has, Logan has to carry Xavier's pain as well. Logan is just fully in shit for this entire movie. I mean, let's be honest, the X-Men universe started and should end with Wolverine, right? Actually, I'm lying. The X-Men universe started with Rogue, and that isn't a joke, I'm not smart enough to make a complex joke like that. I mean, maybe that's why Cyclops, Storm, and Jean were such cardboard cutouts in the movie. They focused too much on how to give Rogue a white streak of hair and forgot about literally the rest of the X-Men. Either way, even though Rogue pretty much started this whole thing, it was her journey in the first film and then Wolverine tagged along and they both mutually helped each other, the main protagonist of the film X-Men is Wolverine. And so I still stand by my belief that the X-Men universe should have ended with Logan. Psych! Why is it that you release a trailer you're pushing your movie back to June. While speaking with IGN, Kinberg talked a bit about what fans could expect from Gambit. Really fresh, dark phoenix, we are ripping that family apart. The next few years, there was no mention of Gambit. I suppose that means the film is officially dead now? New Mutants is going through reshoots, so it's been delayed for early 2019. I I'm sorry, wait, I mean, no, it's actually, it's actually delayed again. And they still have to do the reshoots. Yeah, great. And finally, Dark Phoenix. A movie that looks so mediocre that if you look up mediocre in the dictionary, you're gonna find the poster. So this video was being edited to then be released, but then Dark Phoenix actually came out and uh... The women are always saving the men around here. You might want to think about changing the name to X-Women. It's not very good, is it? What I do like about it is that it does feel like it tries. Even though it was rushed, reshot multiple times, it does feel like people were trying to make a decent movie. It didn't work at all, but they tried. I thought the opening of the movie was solid. I thought Hans Zimmer's score was fantastic. Like most would expect, unsurprisingly, some of the best parts of the movie are just Charles and Eric. James McAvoy or McAvoy and Michael Fassbender give some great performances, just like First Class, just like Days of Future Past. They're actually trying. Also, the main villain in Dark Phoenix, <laughs> I already forgot her name, Jessica Chastain's character, I mean, she tries, she's very forgettable. What's funny is that I would rather watch X-Men The Last Stand than Dark Phoenix. But anyways, if you do want to watch a good X-Men movie, just watch First Class, Days of Future Past, Logan, they're all much better. Anyways, back to the video that was previously edited. At the end of the day, Dark Phoenix being good or not, it still feels hollow because the main character, Jean Grey, has only had one movie to really showcase herself. We haven't gone through a whole journey with her, it's only been one movie and she wasn't even the main star. Thinking about it now, the scene most people remember from her debut film, Apocalypse, is the scene in which Professor Xavier lost his hair. Damn, it's like history repeats itself. Anyways, back to Logan because you see Logan is a rhapsody. It's a film dedicated to showcasing the emotions that Logan goes through and his journey towards becoming a true hero once again. A path which took all of his friends and, in the end, the path that takes his life as well. At the beginning of the film, he risks his life for a car, what he valued most at the moment. 
and at the end of the film, he risks his life for his heart. Oh, so this is what it feels like. The end of the movie serves as a requiem not only for Logan, but for the X-Men as well. That they are something more than just superhuman, they're symbols of heroism. Laura practically turning his grave into a monument showcases this. I'm gonna be honest here, on first watch, I never really bought Laura and Logan's relationship. I felt her calling Logan dad was way too sudden, but upon re-watching it, it didn't bother me as much. I do think the movie had to deal with a lot, and it isn't perfect, but it was still effective. My personal favorite X-Men film is First Class, but that doesn't mean that movie doesn't have problems too. Every movie has problems, except for Catwoman. And for me, what turned me off a bit from Logan and still kind of turns me off is how odd it feels to randomly have a bunch of mutant kids come out of nowhere. They're talked about in the movie, but their appearance feels a little bit sudden to me. But still, plot-wise, it makes sense, as it's Laura's journey to reach them, and Logan is ensuring this happens and they can escape. Jarring or not, it doesn't take away from the fact that Logan's journey is one of reclaiming his status as a hero, as an icon that has comic books made about him, one that isn't defined by his violent past, but a hero that can surpass the horrors that have plagued his life. Thanks to being freed from his sense of responsibility, as he ensures that his daughter and the future generation will survive, he can peacefully die. In the Closer Looks video on Logan, which is fantastic and I urge you to watch it if you haven't, it was said that the MCU would never achieve this sort of finale in which you feel true closure. And in the video, it stated that Tony Stark would never have this happen to him because he just can't die. Because stories these days aren't dictated by what would be best for these characters, but what is most profitable. Thankfully, the Russos and Kevin Feige and the rest of those behind Endgame decided to tell a fulfilling, character-driven story and not showcase another product. And Tony dies. A good death. A poetic death. Now, while Logan did have his poetic death as well, sadly, Fox did not do this for the rest of the X-Men because they've kept milking a profitable franchise. To me, Logan should have been the end of Brian Singer's X-Men universe, but we were hit with Apocalypse and now Dark Phoenix. With the acquisition of 20th Century Fox by Disney completed, the X-Men won't get their triumphant last hurrah. The X-Men will go out in a whimper. And not in the good whimper kind of way as Logan was able to pull off high stakes without having the world end in its third act. By going out in a whimper, I mean the X-Men property won't get its endgame. Its rises, its hidden world. It'll get a delayed film that gets memed on all the time. It almost makes me want Dark Phoenix to be good because this nearly 20 year long saga shouldn't end in such a mediocre way. But what can you do? When the company only cares about money and not a good film. That only goes to show how powerful Logan is. What are the repercussions of being a hero? How much violence can a hero take before they snap? In the never-ending battle of good versus evil, does good truly win every time? In the end, it's all a blur. But there is hope for a brighter future. A new generation that pays tribute to the old one. It's a finale to one of the greatest superheroes ever put to screen. One that will go down in history. And it also works as a finale to the X-Men. A true ending, even after the ending of Days of Future Past. 17 years of film finally brought to an end in a very small, personal level. No one can just look at Hugh Jackman and see Hugh Jackman anymore. They'll always remember that this dude was once Wolverine. He defined the character. And he got the beautiful ending he deserved. Now before I go, I have a question for you. Have you ever felt super lame? Now look at this guy. He has no idea how to deal with his life. His life is not streamlined. Well, guess what does make his life streamlined? Ka-chow, right there. Quote by Lightning McQueen, baby. That's right, the Ridge Wallet. You're probably asking yourselves, what the heck is a Ridge? Well, the Ridge is a company that streamlines the heck out of your life. Let me show you something, bam. This thing is a wallet. Have you ever seen a sexier wallet? You just go like this, pull your cards out, and boom, easy peasy selection. No, don't worry, I'm not gonna show you my credit card number. But not just that, the Ridge makes everyday goods to a standard you don't see every day. They make stuff like backpacks, chargers, phone cases, and of course, wallets. And they make them super elegant and minimal. They're absolutely beautiful, and I genuinely enjoy using this product. I'm not even joking, I showed it to my manager today and he was like, damn it, how dare you? How dare you be cooler than me? Sorry, man. You just gotta get on that ridge life, you know? That was a real conversation. I'm not fired. Don't worry. It isn't even funny. This product has 30,000 five-star reviews. It's such an easy way to carry your cash and cards. Who wouldn't give it five stars? So if you're an intellectual and want to get one of these amazing products, go to ridge.com slash browntable and use the code browntable to get 10% off and free worldwide shipping. Thank you very much, Ridge, for sponsoring today's video. Holy shit, you're still here? You know how few people make it to this part of the video? So thank you very much for staying and actually watching this. Thank you so much, and if you really like the video, please share it. Share it everywhere. I have a Discord if you want to join the Discord. Let's go, man. Join the Discord. I want to thank my patrons. They are amazing. 
Thank you all so, so much. Makes my life a whole, a whole lot easier. I'm not even joking. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for supporting me. I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching the video. Thanks for coming to the table. And I'll see you all next time. Why are you still here?